Welcome to the movie speeching. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take good care. Kingdom is the name of the movie. Please like and subscribe to get every update. A young slave named Exian was carried along a dirt road by merchants when they stopped to assist Qing troops led by General Wang Qi. Waking up from sleep, please look surprised, hopes to one day become a great warrior like you. He is then sold to a small village owned by a local farmer and befriends Piao, another young slave. To make the most of their new life, the two guys' boys practice fencing with each other because they both want to join the army and become generals. Their skills improve as they mature and Exian becomes a more fierce warrior. One afternoon, the Imperial Messenger, Chang Wenjun, attended their training and visited their village. Looking for soldiers to enlist in King Jing's vast army, he asked the farmer Piao while refusing to marry Exian. Piao thought about it that night, but Exian encouraged him to enlist. At dawn, they practiced for the last time, the two best friends assuring that they would meet again one day. Although Exian felt lonely, he spent most of his days training on the farm, lifting more than he could carry and jumping high enough to perform an airstrike. One night, while resting in the hangar, Piao returned to but fell into his arms due to injuries he suffered during a battle. As he lay dying, he warned Exian that the British King Zheng's brother, Cheng Jiao, was plotting to usurp the throne and launch an attack against the kingdom. Through a hand-drawn map, he asked her to go to the marked location, but he did not explain why. He died and told Exian, no matter what achievements he achieved, that his soul would always be with him. The hysterical young man hastily fled cabin with Piao's sword to follow his latest orders. Soon after, a group of soldiers loyal to Cheng Jiao discovered Piao's body, thinking it belonged to Ying Zhang. They murdered the villagers and burned the village. Elsewhere, Exian is cornered by a group of robbers interested in weapons. Luckily, they are quickly defeated thanks to Exian's incredible fighting skills. He left while a masked owl from bandit camp followed closely behind. Soon after, Exian arrives at a small hut and goes in to find King Ying Zhang, although he stops because he thinks he is Piao. Suddenly, the couple is ambushed by a Shikyu assassin. Clearly angered by the encounter, Exian attacks, deducing that Piao was hired to pose as an impersonator and that he was killed to protect the king. The assassin underestimates Exian's fighting ability and is defeated. He begged for his life, but Ying Zhang killed him for his insolence. Then, the two men watched from afar as the village was engulfed in flames. Knowing that Jiao will soon discover his whereabouts, he and Exian escaped through a cave leading up the mountain with the help of the masked owl, revealing himself to be Huliao Diao, a child of the mountain tribe. As the group passes through the cave, the king explains the events that led to the mutiny. Exian was angry because he thought he forced Piao to take risks to save him. However, Ying Zheng pointed out that his friend was determined to protect him without hesitation, risking his life to make his childhood dream come true. This revelation inspired Exian to pursue and assist the king in his plan to meet his army, commanded by Chang Wenjun. Meanwhile, at Qin Palace, Chang Jiao meets with his court to discuss their next move to eliminate Ying Zhang. General Wang Qi, who was said to have retired some time ago, arrives and presents a severed head said to be that of the king's messenger, Wen Jun. He promised to hunt down Ying Zhang in exchange for a portion of the imperial army's rule. Elsewhere, Exian and the group reach the bamboo forest, but are attacked by another assassin, Muta, armed with poison darts. The young warrior proved superior as Muta used his speed to perform incredible moves with his weapons. Using bamboo trees as defensive structures, he overpowered the assassin and delivered the final blow when he turned around. Unfortunately, he was poisoned and lost consciousness. Soon after, Exian woke up in an ancient resort built by the Qin and Sun tribes 400 years ago. While he recovered, the king explained about his family's lineage. He was born into royalty despite having a mother who was a court dancer. His father died after only three years, leaving him a young ruler at the age of 13, greatly disappointing Jiao, who despised the flesh and blood of commoners. Along with his half-brother, backed by the prime minister, businessman turned politician Lu Buwei was also seeking the throne. Late in the afternoon, things became peaceful again until the group sensed the presence of soldiers outside the nursing home. Fortunately, it was Ying Zheng's men, led by Chang Wenjun, who were still alive. He apologized profusely for being late, as their escape plan had gone awry along the way. Meanwhile, Jiao was led to the top of the kingdom's city walls to see the 80,000 soldiers who had enlisted in his army. He showed his true power by capturing a high-ranking soldier born from a farmer and killing him by the deformed giant executioner, Lang Kai, in front of everyone, trusting only those who men were raised among the nobility. At the compound, Huliao prepared delicious meals for the hungry soldiers, delighting everyone with a hearty meal. The king then demanded an explanation as to how the soldiers had been ambushed by Jiao's troops. When Jun reveals that they left with Piao through a secret passage on the night of the coup, not knowing that they would be stopped by General Qi's troops on their 
their way to the rendezvous point. All seemed hopelessly lost until Piao bravely sacrificed himself, attracting the enemy's attention to himself to lead the army out of danger. Van Quan and the others appeared impressed as he charged his horse like a general and raised the morale of the men. Hearing this story brings joy to Exian, who proudly notes his friend's brave efforts and inspires him to help the king retake his palace. The army then presented a map of the area to depict the upcoming siege of the palace. With no reliable allies left to help them, the king came up with the idea of seeking help from the Forgotten Mountain tribe, despite the feud that caused them to secede from the Qin Empire. However, when they reached the mountainside, they were surrounded by mountain tribe warriors, who captured them and brought them to their leader, Yang Duan He. After meeting the king, she was immediately worried about his proposed alliance, believing that the Qin Empire would pay for its betrayal 400 years ago. Before Exian is beheaded by one of the guards, Ying Zheng explains that he intends to stop the war and remove the borders that prevent the seven Chinese states from crossing each other. Please exit and speak arrogantly, begging the mountain tribe to honor their ancestors' dreams of a better world by uniting. Impressed by the two men's enthusiasm, Yang Duan he revealed himself, accepted the alliance, and agreed to help retake the king's throne. Soon after, Ying Zheng exposed his plan to infiltrate the kingdom without fighting Jiao's army of 80,000 soldiers. Disguised as members of the mountain tribe, the group travels to the borders of the Qin Empire. Upon arrival, Yang Duan he outlined his ruse, revealing his intention to unite with Jiao's forces, an opportunity the imperial family could not pass up as it would help strengthen their influence in China. They were welcomed inside, but the chief was only allowed to travel with 50 people, leaving most of the hill tribe members outside the gates. Meanwhile, the prime minister happily told Jiao that their possible alliance with the mountain clan would help suppress Lu Buwei's army. He and the official went outside to greet the leader, who refused to disarm their group until a formal treaty was discussed. As soon as they passed through the Shiki Gate, Ying Zhang began the siege by attacking the guards, signaling everyone to volunteer. After closing the gate, he ordered Exian, He Liao, and a trusted soldier, Bai, to use the underground passage directly connecting to the throne room and assassinate Ching Jiao while himself, when Jun and leader act as a decoy and cause chaos. Immediately afterwards, the king's delegation arrived at courtyard but was stopped by palace soldiers. The prime minister ordered Ying Jing to be beheaded. The mountain tribes rushed in first but were quickly eliminated by the archers. Suddenly, as the soldiers cautiously advanced, the tribesmen awoke, having acquired the ability to endure pain. They ruthlessly dominated the entire army, shocking the Jiao officials. Meanwhile, Exian and the warriors are cornered by Ying Zheng's former general, Zhu Xiai, but he leaves to let his soldiers fight. They were easily defeated thanks to the mountain clan's ferocity and Exian's sword fighting skills. At the same time, Ying Zheng and his group arrive below the palace steps and attack the guards, making Jiao happy to believe that his brother was getting closer to his death. In the passage, Lang Kai, the executioner of Jiao, appears and attacks the warriors with his powerful fist and his force. Exian angrily retaliated by jumping high and kicking the giant in the face, causing him to fall to the ground. Slashing his own throat, he won the battle, to the utter amazement of his brothers. The group heads to the throne room as Xiao boldly declares Ying Zheng as the rightful heir. Zhu Xiai enters the audience room, as Bai reveals that he has been stripped of his rank general because of his barbaric fighting tactics, reduced himself to the rank of mercenary for the empire. He demonstrated his skill by killing tribesmen with his steel blade. Outside the palace, Ying Zheng, when Jun and Yang Duan he were outnumbered by Jiao's army after several of their soldiers died. The king raised the morale of his soldiers to continue fighting and buy time for the assassination to be completed. Meanwhile, Exian attacks Zhu Xiai with all his power. However, the mercenary was put through his paces, even going as far as killing imperial officials to get closer to him. Bai tries to save Exian but is slashed on S shoulder. The young fighter fights back but is knocked down and is slashed in the face, much to Jiao's amusement. Before delivering the final blow, Zhu Xiai scolds him for pursuing his dream, which will only lead to failure. Recall Piao's encouragement to one day become a general, giving him enough strength to block Zhu Xi's sword and repel him. Holding Piao's sword in an attack position, he closed his eyes, waiting for the mercenary to approach him. As he got closer, Xian jumped extremely high and hit him in the chest, breaking his blade the same way he broke the stone during his training session. Zhu Xi dies, leaving Jiao defenseless while the rest of the council flee in terror. He Liao killed the prime minister by injecting poison into his left eye but was stabbed. Luckily, Xian discovered that she always wore armor under her owl costume, so he saved her. Meanwhile, Jiao tried to escape the courtyard and face the tired Ying Zhang, ordering S-men to attack, 
but they hesitated. He was stabbed by his brother's blade and panicked because blood flowed from his wound. His brother spared him but beat him severely as punishment for his usurpation. In the midst of this, General Qi and his army appeared, asking Ying Zhang what he intended to do as king, with the understanding that he would be beheaded if he did not approve of my answers. Ying Zhang solemnly vowed to unify China under the Warring States period, even if other wars occurred to ensure a better future for the country. Satisfied, the general ordered Jiao's men to retreat, twisting his blade to demonstrate his authority. As he leaves, he tells Exian to look forward to meeting him in battle one day. Exian raised Piao's sword while everyone celebrated the victory. Later, when Jun confided in Bai about his suspicions that General Qi was orchestrating events in his favor. Meanwhile, Exian, He Liao, and the king prepare to rule the new empire. Thank you for watching. See you on the next video.